By far the most widely distributed language family in the world is the Indo-European language family. Here we see a map like this makes it seem like really it's more than half the world that speaks uh, languages of this family. But of course this is only a map of countries where an Indo-European language is an official or national language, one of the official languages. So we see throughout most of Europe and through many parts of Africa, Southern Asia, most of the New World. And you also see some surprising exceptions such as the United States where there is no official language but it's effectively English. Um, and same with Australia. But here we see a little bit more complexity to the picture that there are many countries that uh, have an Indo-European language as one of their official languages, but it's not uh, really a primary uh, official language. Um, so this would include all these countries uh, of Africa. So there are no countries in Africa where uh, English or any other Indo-European language is a primary language, rather only uh, at a secondary level. Uh, so you see the same thing here with a place like Kazakhstan, which includes Russian as a uh, secondary language, but its primary language is Kazakh, a, a Turkic language. Um, same thing with Iraq, which now has English in its uh, secondary status, but Arabic is its primary language. Uh, and this is certainly very prominent uh, throughout Africa. Now, there's a few countries that simply recognize English. For example, Malaysia here simply says that you know we recognize English, but it's not official. Same with Lao, recognizing English and French. Um, so the picture is a little bit reduced from the you know almost total world coverage that we see here. But now a map like this really starts to get more of a meaningful picture of the spread of these particular languages. Uh, because it's not really about what is the official language of a country. That's not what really shows you know, the way languages are being used. Uh, an official language of a country might color in, you know, you color in the entire country uh, on the map uh, just because uh, you have somebody in the capital city who's speaking the language. Uh, so this map attempts to show a more realistic picture of where these languages are primary. Uh, and again, you can see the, the movement uh, along these kind of roads or routes. You really see it sort of spreading out along routes, often along the coast, along rivers, and along plains. So you see that here with the coastlines um, generally being covered. Uh, by Indo-European speakers. And uh, you, you can almost see a map here of the Amazon River and some of its branches uh, as uh, Portuguese especially uh, is spoken along the major uh, river fronts, but leaving many of the areas of the Amazon rainforest uh, with speakers of other languages. And you see the same thing with mountains. Here, the Andes Mountains, you have a few valleys where it's pro predominantly Spanish, otherwise uh, other local languages. Same with the Mayan Highlands here. You see it with the Caucasus Mountains over here. And then lands that might be called wastelands or deserts, uh, more inaccessible lands we see here the, uh, the boreal forest where you have some inroads of mostly English speakers along here but then many indigenous language speakers in the other areas Eskimo Aleut uh, speakers uh, Inuit in the uh, more Arctic regions and one of the clearest pictures of this kind of path is uh, across Siberia uh, where 
we see Russian spreading out along the along the plains of Siberia here, really along the the edges of the boreal forest, whereas like the more uh, inaccessible northern forest here, uh, there are speakers of other language families. Uh, and you see the same in Australia with the, the coasts uh, being mainly taken over with English speakers, but then a lot of the, the outback uh, still with primary indigenous Australian speakers. And then of course there are the parts of the world that are dominated by other language families entirely. See Afroasiatic uh, and the Niger-Congo languages uh, throughout Africa, with the exception of uh, Afrikaans and English in South Africa. We see the Dravidian languages of South India and Sino-Tibetan languages of China, uh, Turkic, Mongolian and Central Asia, and so on. But this is not a bad picture of how uh, Indo-European languages are distributed throughout the world. And now to take a little bit more detail on what particular languages are involved, uh, we'll look more closely at the map of Eurasia and of North and South America. Outside that, we simply see in South Africa, Afrikaans and English, and in Australia and New Zealand, we see English. So here's a picture of some of the different major branches of Indo-European in Eurasia. Uh, and you can see sort of streaming out um, the, this blue here being the Indo-Iranian branch from southern Turkey, Armenia, or through to uh, through Persia and into Afghanistan, Pakistan, northern India all the way into Bangladesh. And you can see part of Sri Lanka. You see in green, the Balto-Slavic branch, which includes Latvian and Lithuanian here, but otherwise mostly the Slavic branch. So it has all these Slavic countries. Uh, and then in the east, Russian, which is spreading out here. Now here it shows these stripes uh, between uh, green and gray showing that there's a mix uh, between speakers of primarily Russian and other languages. So you see these inroads of Russian speakers uh, typically along major riverways uh, as well as along the plain belt here uh, all the way to the Pacific. Um, but also some mixing with other language families of Siberia. Now here along the Mediterranean, we see the Hellenic branch, which of course is Greek, uh, containing the Greek mainland and islands. We have Albanian, which has its own branch here in the light blue. And then we get to the two major uh, branches of Western Europe. And in the South, we have the Romance languages or called named after the Roman Empire, uh, the Latin languages, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and perhaps surprisingly Romanian, uh, which is separated from the other Romance languages, but you, even the clue in the name itself, Romania, uh, it's a country and uh, a people with uh, a legacy from the Roman Empire, uh, which was a Latin speaking empire and left this residue of Latin-derived languages, including Romanian. And then we have the red representing the Germanic branch of the family, including, of course, German, and Switzerland, Austria as well, Dutch. Um, and we have the Nordic languages in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, and and of course, English. Oh, and not to forget the Celtic branch, which you can see surviving a bit here in Breton, Brittany, uh, Wales. Uh, you can see some of the survivors of the Celtic branch of the family, which was once much more widespread 
in Europe. And there may be a few surprising gaps here, like you can see uh, Hungary here uh, is in a separate family, as, as is Finland. Um, although often grouped together with the Scandinavian countries, uh, its language is completely separate from um, the neighboring languages. And there's even this little patch here, the famous Basque language, famous because it is not known to be connected to any other language a completely unknown, uh, mysterious, in a sense, language. Uh, mysterious because nobody can find any other language to compare it with. It seems to stand on its own. Now looking at the New World, we see the, the way the, uh, the tiles are laid out here, sort of obviously a simplified picture, and here you can see how this particular map is dealing uh, more with um, official languages. It's being divided country by country uh, without any detail. Uh, whereas here you see you know, some patches within countries and trying to show some of the mixture. But here we simply see uh, one patch for each country with the exception of Quebec here being the province. So we have North America, in red, red for English. Um, and here we have blue for French. So French here, official language of the province of Quebec in Canada, and also of Haiti for here, and of French Guyana. Um, then we see um, well, I'm used to seeing yellow for Spanish, but here we have yellow is actually for Dutch. We have here yellow for Suriname. Uh, and there's also some islands here, a uh, whole mosaic of different islands in the Caribbean here with different colors. Um, oh, and for English, uh, the red, as well as Canada and the United States, we also have Belize, Jamaica, Bahamas, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and Guyana as uh, English speaking areas. But then of course, um, the majority of the rest of uh, the New World other than North America is uh, mainly number one language being Spanish all the way from Mexico down to the extent of Chile uh, all, all along here. And then of course, Portuguese uh, specifically for the country of Brazil. And so one little spot here that I really, uh, really enjoy, consider it kind of like a little linguistic rainbow, a little little medley here. Uh, and this is this area called the Guyanas. So this, this region at the north edge of South America is called the Guyanas. It includes the country of Guyana, but also many areas around it. If we zoom into this area, you can see that you have the, these three countries, and then you have two provinces on either side, make uh, up these five different areas, roughly, you know, on the same order of size, and all in a row. And each of them speaks one of the five major Indo-European languages of the New World. So we have the Bolivar province of Venezuela speaking Spanish country of Guyana, speaking English, country of Suriname, speaking Dutch, country of French Guyana, speaking French, and then the state of Amapá in Brazil, speaking Portuguese. So really kind of a microcosm of the bigger picture. And that is a quick look at the distribution of Indo-European languages in the world today.